This video is sponsored by Green Chef. If you guys didn't know, Green Chef helps me eat clean and live a healthy lifestyle. They're a certified organic meal kit company that provides delicious, nutritionist approved recipes. They feature clean ingredients that are pre-portioned and often pre-prepped, delivered to your doorstep. As you guys know, I'm currently in my loves to cook era in my life, but I didn't always used to be that way. Thinking of something to cook, finding a recipe, going to the grocery store, getting ingredients, and managing to not forget something, all before even beginning to cook, was all a grind. And Green Chef took a lot of that burden off of the task and introduced me to new spices and foods and helped me enjoy the process of making a convenient meal that helps me build healthier habits. They have over 80 weekly chef-crafted meal options to choose from, so it makes it hard to get bored. Plus, every Green Chef customer now gets a free session with a new nutritionist. So if you want to sign up and kickstart your journey towards better health today, you can use my code 60Beatrice at checkout to get 60% off plus free shipping. Head on over to greenchef.com for more details. And as always, huge thank you to Green Chef for sponsoring this video. You guys, I may have dug them a done fucked up. What had happened was I was in the gym getting a workout in, doing like this step up thing on one of the benches. I landed on my left foot, but like I felt this tearing on the bottom of my foot. And then I was just like, oof, that wasn't good. But then like I continued doing the motion because it wasn't like a super painful experience. It was just like a shooting pain and then it was over kind of thing. But then as the day progressed, I noticed my foot hurting like more and more. And then I went to bed, woke up, could not put pressure on my heel. There was like part of my dumb little peanut that was like, okay, let's just power through. You know, it might be like a just waking up type issue. You know, like when you're a little bit stiff and sore as a 31 year old lady, sometimes that happens to you. So I got up, I was making a healthy breakfast of oats. It was just not getting better. So I spent all of yesterday in bed Today, I can walk on it, I could put pressure, but I probably shouldn't. So we're in a bit of a little bit of a, so th th this, so this thing kind of put like a little bit of a monkey wrench in the grind, if you will. Not super jazzed about any of it, honestly. <laughs> Pretty sad because my ass knew that it has issues with plantar fasciitis. It knew it, it knew it from the beginning. It knew that lunges are kind of a lot. You know, I gotta be very careful with my lunges. Bulgarian split squats. Anything that's like a single leg weight bearing workout is just, I gotta be careful with it because my ligaments and my feet don't like that as a plus size lady. Honestly, I probably should kind of stay away from them or gradually bring them in, if anything. So do as I say, not as I do, that kind of thing. But yeah, so now our, we are a little bit nerfed but I'm not gonna be letting this get me down. What we're going to do is we're gonna focus on nutrition while I'm a little bit incapacitated. And let me show you what I mean by that. Charles, this is why. I found this thing off of Amazon. I thought it might be a little bit better than crutches. Poop, you smell like poop. Why? It's supposed to be like a hands-free crutch thing. I don't think I have it adjusted properly because I have to use this like handle bit. But I figure I'm going to stay off of this foot for as much as possible so it could heal properly and then we could get back in it. I could still go to a swimming, kind of have to watch it because this has the potential to get bad really fast. And then it might put me out of commish and then my rail gets low and then you get off track and yada yada yada, you know the story. But we're not gonna let that happen. That's why we got this whole apparatus. I don't know necessarily if it's worth the money. It just looked cool and I was like, peg leg it is. Peg leg is cooler than crutches, but honestly, I probably could have gotten away with a cane. I probably still will get a cane because I have to like strap myself in to this whole thing. I might actually return this because it is a little bit overkill and also it doesn't give me the freedom that I thought it was gonna give me. Like I was like, I could run around in the yard. I could still do yard work with this thing. You can't, because you gotta hold it the whole time peg legging around the house. Oh, I gotta show you the back of my shirt too. Back of my boo sheet. Gets injured again. Um, okay. Come, sit for a while. Oh my God, Mavis is gonna kill me with all of her toys. The back of my knee is sweating so hard right now. It's disgusting. 
I'm trying to figure out if this is just a little bit too casual of a pose for this vlog right now because it does very much like look like talk to local singles in your area, but I digress. We're gonna go with it because it's kind of better than this, right? But me and Charles would like to tell you a little bit of good news. So I was, <laughs> as I do, a little bit sad and feeling like the fattest that I've ever been in my life. And I was like, I don't get it. I have been working out like this was pre injury, right? Okay. I was feeling like the fattest I've been in my life. I was like, why do I feel so rotund right now? I was like, my middle, my belly feels like way bigger than it was. I do not understand. So I did some measurements. I took measurements about like three weeks ago and then I took them again today. And it turns out around like my belly button area, I lost like three and a half inches, but the fat part of my stomach, like this spare tire, has stayed the same. We all know that you don't get to pick and choose where the fat goes from, but that makes a whole lot of sense because, you know, I was feeling like this area was so much bigger, but it was just bigger in comparison because this a little bit above it, like around the belly button, had shrunk. So, like, good news, but also bad news because if I didn't look preggers before, looking like it now. All of that spare tire just right in the uterus area. I swear the single best thing I ever did was put air tags on my keys because I lose those shits as soon as I set them down. Okay, what I'm doing now is going against <laughs> what I said I was gonna do, which was rest and venturing out to the grocery store because we are out of everything and I wanna make some breakfast. I ended up leaving my cane at home. The plan is just to hobble to the nearest grocery cart and use that as a cane. I honestly can't figure it out. I don't know if I'm just a little bit dumb or what, but like the cane situation, it doesn't really help. It just like puts pressure on my wrist. Like it feels far better to me to just kind of like hobble and like limp around than use the cane. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but we don't have time for that nonsense. Grocery cart it is. Besides, I can't, I don't know how I would hobble with a grocery cart and the cane. No one needed that explanation. There's some copyright music playing, but there's actually like no one in this bitch right now. So I feel like I could vlog. Which never happens. Okay, so I have about maybe like 40 minutes before I have to start getting ready for water aerobics because that is an exercise I can do with the stupid foot. So I figure we would do a really quick grocery haul and then get some oats going. They're supposed to be overnight oats, but obviously we don't have overnight. In the past, I've found that it doesn't really matter if you're using quick oats, so. First and foremost, I got this big thing of baking soda. You guys told me that when I combined the baking soda with the vinegar when cleaning my vegetables and fruits that it was just making water and kind of just canceling out this stuff. So I'm just gonna be using baking soda moving forward. My grocery store gives a free item like every single week and this week was these gold potatoes. So I don't really cook with potatoes that often, but might as well. Maybe we'll make some gnocchi, I don't know. I needed dates for the overnight oat recipe, but I also found these dry figs and prunes. So I was like, you know what, let's give them all a go. Needed hemp seed for the oatmeal as well as flaxseed meal. I've never used either before, so I am a little bit curious about those. The recipe called for shredded carrots. All I found was these matchstick ones. I hope they're not too chunky, but whatever. Um, if you haven't guessed, I'm going to be making carrot cake oatmeal. Pumpkin seeds for the topping. Then I just got rigatoni. I've been making a lot of pasta dishes lately. This is my favorite pasta shape right now. I don't know why. It's just a good sauce vehicle. <laughs> uh, but I also picked up this red lentil rotini. This has 25 grams of protein. So if this tastes good, this might be a good alternative. Got the milk and the eggs along with some steak. And I also got this popcorn to try popping some popcorn myself. Now let's make some oats. Chetty, can you stop screaming for five seconds, honey? Honey bean. Oh goodness. I ended up putting a lot more maple syrup in this because shit was bleak. Um, it tasted like a pile of seeds, which I guess is what it was. <laughs> now it tastes good. 
It tastes healthy though, if you know what I mean. Like it tastes healthy. Oh my God. I changed my mind. It's a little bit too healthy. It's not good. Gotta work up to that level of health. <laughs> it's so bad. It's like eating a sweater. My mom is. I opened the back for you. What's your sh oh. shirt today? I'm the fire and ice again. Sorry, fire and ice. This fit back here. I keep um, putting. It's gonna be four ounces, and if it's five ounces, did you make them light? No, I was I calling them because they were light. Ounces. It was my mom, I think. Get that thing out of my face. Mom, <laughs> your your back's open still. Your oh. back is open still. Somebody didn't check the back. Mom, here's your kosa. <laughs> That's not a kosa, it's a pill binder. It's a kosa, and I can't think of what it's called. That means like thing in Spanish. This oatmeal still isn't quite right. I made strawberries and cream oatmeal from a recipe a while back. It was okay, but something tasted a little bit off. So I decided to kind of like make my own spin on it today. I don't know if I just don't like strawberries or if I don't like oatmeal now or what it is, but it's just not hitting. It's been about four or five days since you've seen me last, since I was like all gung-ho trying to find some kind of solution to my plantar fasciitis problem that would still allow me to do all the things. We tried the peg leg, I tried a cane, an office chair, pretty much everything besides a crutch, because that would just make too much sense. But the only thing that kind of worked was just staying off of it entirely, which was not ideal. I tried going to water aerobics, but like you still, even though like you don't have a lot of body weight on your feet, you're still like bouncing around on your toes in the water, which if you have plantar fasciitis issues, like you know, it's not a great experience. But I did end up going to water aerobics twice and just trying to like modify, like landing flat footed or not pushing myself cardio wise you know trying to like baby the foot but still get in a little bit of movement i don't feel like i worked out at all i feel <laughs> sad i just reached a point where i was just like you know what we're gonna sit on the ass and we're gonna heal because i want this to go away and then i want to figure out ways to prevent it from happening in the future which would probably involve not doing step ups while i'm this overweight so i stayed off of it as much as possible i did teach myself how to crochet i've been crocheting up a storm um i'm very slow at it but i'll show you some of the little projects that I made so far in like the starts of blankets that I'll probably never finish but you know whatever okay accidentally made this witch hat when I was trying to make a circle but had some fun with that then I was just trying to do a straight crochet stitch and don't know what happened but she got a little wonky um, again same thing got a little wonky but on a smaller scale just trying to make these flowers ended up making this butthole and then these ones actually look like flowers then we moved on to granny squares this was a new era for me love these color combinations and then the last thing I made was this wombo thing wombo granny square I think I'm gonna make a whole blanket with these it looks pretty good to me I don't know I was I was pretty happy with myself and that has been my crocheting journey so on the bright side it's kind of good that my crochet wild hair hobby didn't go untouched because I have a tendency to buy all of the things to start these hobbies and then not actually do them. But that was not the case this time because of that injury. But girl, I have not stepped foot in that gym, no pun intended, in the past week. So I am pretty sad about that because I was on a roll. But it's kind of crazy because uh, in this week, I realized how much getting in the gym every single day was helping me out mental health wise because immediately I just felt like way more lethargic way more I don't know just like my mood was more down so I need that physical activity I mean regardless if I lose a pound or not like it just does like working on my fitness is integral to my mental health 
and well-being. It just is. She's important. So I got a little bit down and also because I can't stand on my feet for a long time, I was having trouble like standing in the kitchen and cooking, which is another thing that's really been bringing me joy lately. So I haven't been. There was a Taco Bell incident, not even gonna lie. I love me some Taco Bell. And also we ordered Thai food. And I've actually been having like a harder time, like more cravings this week. And I think maybe it might have been because, you know, whatever boost I was getting from working out, I was trying to supplement with food, like resorting back to my old ways. Like I didn't binge or anything, but I mean like, does that make any sense at all? So I haven't been cooking really, but I have been keeping my sourdough starter alive. And today is the day when we can actually make some bread. So maybe we will make some bread and also try to get our ass in the gym for a little bit of a sesh because my foot is feeling way better. Like it's still like a little bit iffy, but it's not to the point where I can't put weight on my heel or whatever else. I went on a walk with my mom this morning and everything was fine. So I think I'm ready Okay, I have done this before and it turned out okay. I followed Joshua Wiseman's recipe from his cookbook that he had, but it was like a lot, a lot of steps. And I found a recipe that's a little bit different from the Clever Carrot. It looks more beginner friendly, it looks more straightforward, and it looks a little less time consuming. <laughs> uh, love Joshua Wiseman, but he does tend to put in like a lot of steps that I don't know if they're necessary or not. But I'm also not a professional chef, so I don't know. I'm trying this one this time. Long story short, 150 grams of our starter that is very much alive and bubbly, very happy about. And then we will feed this guy and pop him in the fridge. My plan is I bought this like big like chest freezer to put in the basement. When I do make sourdough bread, I'll make it in bulk and then just freeze whatever I'm not using in the moment. And I also have like a lot of other things that I wanna do with that freezer as well that go along with the whole, I wanna have a farm, I wanna grow my own food. But how do you store your own food? I don't know, big freezer? Maybe. Um, anyway, 150 grams, dogs. Anyway, 150 grams of starter, check. 25 grams of olive oil, 250 grams of warm filtered water. I'm using this unbleached artisan bread flour from Bob's Red Mill. Don't know if it's good. Just saw it and it said artisan, so I was like, that's the one. 500 grams of this. The thing about recipes that require flour is I always make an ungodly mess. And 10 grams of sea salt. I don't know why it took me so long to say sea, but cool, 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 cool. Squish together everything with your hands until the dough is formed. I, I feel like I should have probably dusted my hand first with flour, but honestly, I don't think it really helps. Probably would have helped more than this. See, like the reason I don't like putting my hand in the dough is because I feel like it at that point adds an extra ingredient of dead skin. Okay, now we let this auto lies for 30 minutes. I guess in the first 30 minute increment, I'll go ahead and start editing or whatever. I was gonna go into the gym and work out, but I think I'll do that in the second rising waiting period. Also, I read through the recipe a little bit more thoroughly and it turns out like it's pretty much the same as Joshua Wiseman's, so apologies to him. He didn't add extra steps that were unnecessary. It's just this site bamboozled me and pretended like it was going to be easier. See you in a bit. Surprise, surprise, I didn't get very far in editing because this madness was going on, but my mom ended up calling and asked if I wanted to go with the girls to the farmer's market. And of course I obliged, even though this little shit was going along. Oh my God, what's she wearing? It's shirt today says pink is the new black and has hella rhinestones. I got a couple of things at the market, but decided not to go too crazy, even though I really wanted to get a pumpkin. And the green chilies roasting smelled fantastic, but I figured I'd wait for Stevie so he can experience the culture that is green chili pumpkin patch goodness. But enjoy this footage of my grandma hitting up the free fruit samples. Afterwards, we went to the airport because my grandma insisted that they'd find her a flight and sell her a ticket, but they did not, so she'll have to get it online anyway. So we ended up sitting in the airport cafe, ate some lunch, and watched some planes. 
Hobbling around the uneven terrain at the market had my foot a bit strained and achy, so I decided not to push it with a gym workout. And also my dough did not rise after waiting eight hours for it to do so. But I decided to try baking it anyway because I had already spent the entire day making it. And even though it was really flat, it still turned out okay. So the good news is sourdough is very forgiving. It actually looks pretty decent. Would you like some? Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> I look crazy. <laughs> mm. Okay. Cut. And hey, this is Editing B. That's why I look like absolute dog shit. And I have this really holy shirt on. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have shown you that, but some people get sad when I don't do a proper outro. So I wanted to not make the two of you that get sad, sad about it. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye!